Hello, I'm Sam Chaudhary, and uh, today I will talk about our hunting mitigation approaches in Bangladesh and Myanmar. We all know that um, the shrubbers are facing two major problems across the East Asia Australasia flyway. One is habitat loss, of course, and hunting um, uh, in, in almost all the wintering countries, especially in Bangladesh, Myanmar, and uh, South China. So I will tell you what we are doing in Bangladesh and the magnitude of this problem um, in Bangladesh as well. So earlier last year, we did a project called BirdLife International in order to identify uh, the number and species of birds that are being uh, hunted or otherwise illegally killed throughout the country, uh, basically taken uh, from the wild. So we in order to uh, find that um, answer, we, we took uh, two main approaches. We um, did a literature review uh, targeting newspaper reports, social media reports, which is now really important and very good source of data, as well as published papers and reports. At the same time, we did field surveys using semi-structured uh, interview interviews um, targeting local people at six locations as you can see in the map in Bangladesh and what we found was really interesting we had estimated that approximately 25 to 43,000 wild birds are annually uh, being lost uh, due to illegal killing and cage what trade and there are many um, many ways that the, these birds are um, being killed or taken from the wild is, uh, you know, this predator control, this recreational hunting. Um, there's also, of course, substances, delicacies, and trade and cage bird uh, is also one of the critical problems. We have also seen uh, bycatch in fishing gear and things like that. Um, so in the in the graph to the right, um, I have listed uh, species that are uh, basically targeted by uh, the uh, the cage bird industry and these are the top 15 species as you can see that starting from rose ring parakeet to jungle mara everything is being traded um, and a lot of these data sources are actually from the forest department um, uh, social media page where people report um, um, wild bird uh, being traded and then they go and collect those uh, and then put, put put a post on social media on, on their uh, results. So I will uh, mostly focus on what we are doing on spoon goose and pepper conservation in Bangladesh, uh, especially on hunting mitigation. So our project is called Bangladesh Spoon Goose and Pepper Conservation Project that I lead. Um, we mainly um, focus on the key shorebird sites in Bangladesh. Um, uh, we monitor the coastal sites, as you can see on the map, um, yearly, and some of the sites we do that monthly. Uh, we work with the government to designate new protected areas. We try and find uh, new um, spoon boots and pipers and other shorebird sites. We also do outreach and education, but today I will only focus on hunting mitigation side of that. And after that, I will focus on uh, what we're doing in Myanmar. So shorebird hunting uh, on Shunadi Island, uh, we have first noticed it in 2010 when we were doing surveys. And we really had to do something about it and put a stop to that. Um, and uh, we took a year to really understand uh, who are these hunters, why they are hunting, and which are the locations they're hunting, what kind of uh, methods and gear they're using to hunt shorebirds. Um, and we did a thorough survey targeting the local people and it took us an entire year to really understand what's going on. And some of them have actually claimed to have captured spoonbills and pipers. Um, and in 2000, um, October 2011, we have signed an agreement uh, with 25 uh, hunters, uh, conservation agreement. Um, that they will, of course, stop hunting. Um, they will take the alternative livelihood support that we are uh, suggested, um, and they will uh, uh, protect the sites from outsiders as well. Um, in the next slide, I will tell more about. It. So this is how it works. Um, so basically, we didn't give any of the hunters any money. We bought them the livelihood support 
um, that they wanted. Some of them wanted fishing boat and net. We had provided them with that. Some of them wanted poultry and um, you know tailoring shop and things like that. So we uh, we worked with the village conservation groups, uh, who are basically um, you know village uh, leaders, a uh, team of leaders who worked with us uh, in this project. Um, so we uh, had uh, identified with the support uh, of the village conservation group, had identified the alternative livelihood support, and with the uh, with with the with our project and the village conservation group, we had provided the hunters with these supports. But uh, it was not just a giveaway. The deal was they are going to uh, pay us back a very small percentage of their monthly income. Um, so that was that the whole thing worked as a credit, uh, microcredit loan. But we never gave them any kind of sort of pressure to return the money. This this is this we initiated that mainly to um, you know keep a keep a communication with the with the local hunters. Um, now we call them ex hunters, um, and they you know they know that they, they, it's 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 not for free so they they have to improve their livelihood and only then they can uh be self-sufficient not only that we had worked with um, a wide variety of uh, different stakeholders including um, local children local women we have uh, organized large-scale campaigns so everyone actually know knew the the hunters and uh, within their villages so there was no way for the um, ex-hunters to go back to the village and sell bars because everyone in the village through these events knew that uh, they had been uh, given support uh, to give up hunting and take on a new occupation at the same time hunting is is not um, is of course illegal it's not a very respectable respectable uh, occupation so the hunters gladly took uh, what we had offered um, so we also did uh, a boat race that was uh, quite um, effective i would say um, and you can see this in this image, this billboard was basically um, constructed with the money that we had received from the uh, ex hunters. So basically they had, uh, we had 80% um, of the money back from the ex hunters and that money were used by the village conservation groups for campaigns like this and the billboards. Uh, we actually went back to the uh, ex-hunters and try and see what's going on in 2016 after five years of, of the initial intervention. And we found that uh, at least 15 of them have uh, improved uh, income. Um, and almost everyone in the village said that there is no more hunting option on the island since 2012. So in in Myanmar, we um, focus mainly uh, in in Gulf of Motama um, here and um, Nantar Island here, and the work is primarily being conducted by Banka, who has been uh, the uh, partner of the Spoon to Send by Task Force for a long time now. And similar to Bangladesh, uh, hunting was a, a big problem, probably a much bigger problem than Bangladesh. Um, and it was discovered uh, in 2009 and 10 uh, that you know people or local people were uh, taking a large number of short migratory shorebirds from these areas, and the methods they mostly used was mist nets, um, also noose traps. So mist nets is actually more uh, devastating than the noose traps because they could get a large number of birds in one go. In Bangladesh, people mostly use noose traps. Um, so uh, the Banka identified uh, professional, opportunistic and occasional hunters, um, and they had provided support to uh, a total of 64 uh, individual hunters in, uh, at the Gulf of Motama. And the support included very similar to Bangladesh, fishing boat, um, ice boxes, um, and a poultry and uh, similar things. At the same time, uh, Banka did uh, other community-based development work that would actually uh, support the entire community, not only individual hunters. Um, so they had um, excavated uh, ponds uh, for rainwater harvesting. Um, they have initiated uh, 
plantation, uh, roadside plantation and nurseries. Uh, um, also, there was uh, involvement of uh, local conservation groups in various events organized by Banka um, over the last 12 years uh, in different parts of Gulf of Motama. So the local community is really, uh, now they really understand the value of the Spoonbill Sandpiper and the support they had received because of that. Um, and you can see that here is an image of the Spoonbill Sandpiper that was um, captured, uh, taken from one of the villages at the Gulf of Motama. Um, uh, Banka is also part of SIPA. It initiates uh, large scale campaigns targeting local school children um, and many other different stakeholders. Um, so this is also quite important, um, law enforcement, because you, you, know, you support the hunter and um, you give them with livelihood support, but there has to be some kind of um, legal pressure as well. Because for Bangladesh people, the ex-hunters knew that they cannot just go back to the villages because they, everyone knew about them. And uh, they knew that, you know, even if they sort of lapse, there would be consequences that is backed by law. So at the Gulf of Motama, uh, smart patrolling has been initiated by uh, and led by Banka, uh, which, is, which has uh, produced excellent results um, since 2015. And uh, we think that's that's a really comprehensive approach. So alternative livelihood support, local outreach and education, and law. These are the three key pillars for uh, alternative uh, for hunting mitigation schemes, both in Bangladesh and Myanmar. That's it. Thank you.